Hey guys, welcome to the next video in the substitution elimination video set. In this one, we're going to be dealing with alcohols and how we turn them, uh, how we can use them in substitution and elimination reactions. All right. So up until now, you've only seen halogen leaving groups in these videos. Now we're going to show alcohols. So, and what's the big deal about using an alcohol? So let's assume I give you this sort of reactant with, let me draw that better. OH reacting with CN minus. Okay, so let's try to evaluate this as we normally have with our substitution elimination uh, rules. All right, first thing is to identify our leaving group, which is our alcohol, and it's on a primary carbon. All right, so we can we can rule out any of the carbocation reactions E1 or SN1, and now we have to think of uh, E2 or SN2. Well. SN2 is really good in a primary leaving group, but we can go E2 if we have a bulky base. In this case, we are reacting with CN-, which is a good nucleophile and a weak base. So we're going to go with the SN2 route. So let's try to draw what the SN2 is going to look like. Tax that carbon, kicks out the OH. We're going to get this answer. Okay, so let's look at what we just did. We kicked out an OH group, right, which resulted in the formation of OH minus. OH minus is a really strong base. Now, what's the problem with doing what we just did? Well, remember, we just created a really strong base, okay, because OH minus is not that stable. Remember, if you remember your ARIA rules, we don't really have anything stabilizing that negative charge. There's no resonance here. There's no induction. So we have this strong base that is going to react again. So it can react with something that we just made, right, or another one of our reactant molecules to give us something like this. So we just create an OH minus. Now imagine it finds another OH, another um, of our substrate molecules in the solution. Because remember, we're never just reacting with one molecule and one nucleophile, we have a bunch of them. So now our really strong base is gonna grab that somewhat acidic hydrogen, giving us this. Now we have this O minus, it's not gonna react well at all with our um, nucleophile or base. So you see, we're gonna ruin our reaction, okay? And so how do we essentially, um, how, what do we actually do? right, in this scenario, when we have an alcohol. So when we have an alcohol, just straight OH on our compound, the conventional way we've done SN1, SN2, E1, E2 does not work. There's only, there's a very certain ways that we have to do this, okay? So we have this OH group. Now there's essentially a couple things we can do. One of them is add an acid, okay? so add acid all right now the type of acid is going to determine what we're going to be doing here if we add an acid such as hcl hbr or hi not hf we're going to be going through one of the substitution pathways sn1 or sn2 now this is going to be a lot more clear cut in terms of how we determine SN1, SN2, E1, E2, right? So hopefully it'll be a little bit easier for you guys. And so why exactly does adding acid actually help anything? So I'm gonna add HCl. And so remember, OHs are slightly basic, so it's gonna grab the H, kick out the chlorine, giving us this. Remember there's a plus charge. And Cl minus. So we essentially, if you look, we turned an OH into H2O almost, right, with a plus charge. And you guys have seen water. You know that water is very stable on its own, right? And so it's a little bit weird to see a water molecule on your structure. So it's going to really want to leave so that you can see, so that water can exist as how we've always known it, just as H2O. All right. So when you have a primary, um, little alcohol that we just added HCl with. Now, we can't just have this water leave on its own because we formed this. Primary carbocation, really bad. 
Okay, so what's instead is going to happen is the CL minus that we just created is going to attack, kick this out. And we have our CL with H2O, right? Primary chlorine. So we just did an SN2. So it's safe to say that on a primary OH with HCl, HBr, HI equals SN2. All right? So that's fine to say. What about secondary? So now let's see. Let's create, change the color. Let's have this alcohol. We have a secondary alcohol now. Okay? Reacting with, let's change it up a bit. Let's do HBr. So again, OH is slightly basic. So we can grab the H, kick the BR out, giving us something that looks like this. And BR minus. Right? So now, can we do an SN2, right? SN1, E1, E2. Now remember I told you that when we usually add HCl, HBr, HI, it's going to be confined to either SN1 or SN2. So in this case, we can't rule out SN1 because the secondary carbocation is pr fairly stable. Now, SN2 is going to be a little bit difficult because now the BR minus is going to have to get through all the substituents around it and this OH with two hydrogens around it, right? This o oxygen with two hydrogens. So in fact, on a secondary leaving group, with when we add HBr, HI, or HCl, we're going to get SN1. So this is going to leave giving us this structure, okay, with H2O, and then our Br minus is now going to attack this way, giving us Br. Now, we just did an SN1, which means we did carbocations, so always watch out for shifting, always. And in the first one where we did the SN2, we always get inversion, all right? Um, so, but that won't be too much. You won't really have to deal with that with alcohols just because SN2 is only really going to happen on a primary uh, alcohol. And you know that primary alcohols, if we look at this one, they have two hydrogens, right? So that's not going to be chiral, but just keep in mind. So if we now have a secondary OH with HCl, HBr, HI, let's just bring that down equals SN1, okay? So I'm gonna erase this to make a little bit more room. Now let's go on to tertiary. Okay, and so we're gonna have, let's now do HI. So the OH, remember it's slightly basic, it's going to grab that H, kick out the I, giving us something that looks like this. And remember, we talked already how on a secondary alcohol, we already can't do SN2, so we can pretty much assume that this is going to be even worse to have a tertiary alcohol. So SN2 again will not happen. And we have our I minus, of course. So what's instead going to happen is the water leaves, giving us something that looks like this. Okay. And then we're gonna have our H2O. And now the I minus can come in and attack, giving us this. All right, so again, we did an SN1. And always remember, because we have a carbocation, the iodine can attack from the front or back because carbocations are sp2 hybridized. That means they have that trigonal planar geometry, or just to simplify it, it's all flat. All three bonds are flat, and a carbocation counts as sp2. So there is no way it can determine whether to attack from the front or back. So we can get the I to be wedged, or it can be dashed, which means we can get a racemic mixture. Just keep that in mind, okay? And so again, let's just erase this so we can summarize what we just did. 
we have a tertiary OH with all this stuff. Oh. We're going to get SN1. And always with the shifting. Keep that in mind. Okay? You can always get a shift if the carbocation we form, we can shift it to is more stable. So that's what happens when we add an acid with the halo or use the halogen acids. All right, now why did I exclude HF? HF is not actually a strong acid, and we need to be using strong acids. So if you use HF, right, we would lose the H right to the alcohol. So we'd get, let's say here, there's an R group, whatever that alkyl chain is. We have our pronated water here, and we get F minus. Now, F minus is actually not, um, it's going to be somewhat strong base. Not strong, but it won't be too weak. All right. All those halogen acids, HCl, HBr, and HI, the resulting halogen with a negative charge, Cl minus, Br, I minus, they're very stable in terms of they're not basic at all. Okay. Because they're such a strong acid. Now, when we get F minus, fluorine is really small. Right? If you look at the periodic trends, it's a small atom. And now we have a concentrated negative charge on it. Right, So that those electrons, that negative charge, is not stabilized at all. It's actually much less stable because fluorine is so small. So it's actually going to react again and grab another hydrogen. So we just created that protonated water. So sometimes it may be able to attack and kick the water out or um, get the carbocation. Or sometimes it might just grab the hydrogen again giving us HF. So fluorine is not a good base. Sorry, it's, it's a actually, it's slightly basic, so it's not good to use with these alcohol reactions, okay? So remember how we showed the first example, alcohol with CN minus. Our alcohol was not a good leaving group, but with this acid, we turned it into a good leaving group. So that's the primary thing that we're doing here. Alcohols by themselves are just not good leaving groups. But giving them a strong acid can make it a good leaving group. By protonating it, right, we can essentially turn them into water, which is stable on its own. So we are making them good leaving groups. So that's it for this video. In the next one, we're going to go through another way to make them into good, uh, into good leaving groups, but with acids that are not these HCl, HBr, HI, these halogen acids. Okay? So we're going to go through those sort of reactions. Right? And I will see you guys in the next video. I hope this one helped you guys.